Hello and welcome back to Final Fantasy 16. So in the last one, we basically I we, we helped Mid a lot. We helped her quite a lot. Uh, she wanted us to go on a bunch of errands to help her get an airship ready, basically. Or not, I keep calling it airship. Normal ship. A land ship ready. So we went and got help from Gav and Otto. I went to check both scenes for them. And then we also got help from... Oh, who, who's the second one? It's It's been a week. It's been a long week. Uh... Hold on, let, let me let me double check my quest here. So letting off steam. Gav Otto and everyone. Helena. Yeah, we had to help get the the fallen runes to, to get the thermal helm for the top of the whatever you call this, thermal displacement stack, yeah. And then we had Jill and Tarya help us with the final one. So uh we, I, I went and saw both those scenes too. So if you skipped it and you were wondering like one or the other, I, I saw, I saw both of those. So I have a little theory crafting update. I didn't really get to do much of it because I've been pretty busy the last week. But so with our current one, our previous one, only a few things got answered. Those questions are still existing in my mind. You know, some of them, like who is Yota? Yota, I. I, I still don't actually know, but I have a new one. There are no photos or anything on this one. I, I pretty much made this one pretty quickly, but my main questions are, why did the council believe in Olivier so much? Uh, from what we saw, they were like directly thanking him for talking down Titan, basically, but Annabella did all of that. So I think Annabella's kind of taking control of the council and just crediting her son to try to get him in power and then they're like oh well we have to listen to her she's she's the empress you know i, I don't know whether they actually believe he did anything because the kid doesn't do anything he just sits there and plays with his toy like it, it doesn't it doesn't make sense to me that why they would believe in him so much and also now he's the emperor he's like what five i don't know it's it's weird so that's a question I have that hopefully is going to get explained in the near future. Uh, other than that, how has Clyde been affected since the Titan battle? We haven't really seen much of like the effect on him. The fact that he like sucked in all that ether to, to do his like super punches, basically. I figured that would have an effect on his body. And he hasn't been coughing up blood. We, I don't think we've ever seen him cough blood or anything. But he he's kind of still in really good shape compared to the other dominants who go through that stuff um is yota trying to keep joshua away from clive or is it joshua's decision i'm only asking that because like in that one scene in dollar mill he uh, she, she saw she noticed that it was clive she had to have by that point you know like at first she wouldn't have noticed but she came back out and watched the whole fight before she took him away and she didn't mention clive I don't know if that was just like, you know, I, I don't know. I, I feel like she's partially doing it, but I don't know if she's doing it at his behest or not, you know? Uh, it's kind of weird. I, I'm still just totally curious why is Joshua completely avoiding Clive? I know he has ultimate in him and he doesn't want the vessel to escape and take over his brother, but like, I don't know. <laughs> it's weird to me. What is Byron doing in Convert since parting ways? Just a question I have. I hope we get to see him soon and that he's doing okay because he raised some flags uh, when he left and he better be okay. He's he's too precious. Theories. Clive may not live to see the end. Based on everything that I've seen so far and all my like recent rewatches of some scenes and stuff, like just the fact that the way it's written that he's an outlaw and what he does is good for everyone but he's going to be seen as a villain like like sid said you know there doesn't seem to be a peaceful outcome at the end of this i don't think clive's gonna live honestly i 
hope that he does, but I, I really don't see it. And honestly, like, I, I'm feeling he might die before the end of the game. I don't know. Like, my, my, my entire thought on that is, like, maybe Joshua would be the main character for the last, like, two fights or something. But I, I don't... There's something about that. I don't know. Wild Theory. Annabelle is Leviathan. Don't, don't judge me too harshly there. I have no idea. But at first I thought it was Olivier. But then I thought, like, Leviathan's always kind of like a... E not evil. Uh, angry. Angry being, you know, that just absolutely hates everything. At least some portrayals of Leviathan. Annabella just kind of has that attitude that I feel like would fit Leviathan. And we have no idea about the Water Dominant. I don't know if we ever are going to learn, because you think there'd be a hint by now of something, but there's nothing. And this this may stay this this may stay unknown forever. Who knows? But that's that's my random thought. Either that or the Water Dominant is young and just uh, hasn't really come into their power, so they like exist, but no one knows who they are yet, kind of thing. Because it's it's really weird to me that you know they would have eight dominants prominently discussed, but not who they are. Uh, other than that, Harbard and Barnabas seem to serve Ultima. That one's a given. I mean, the fact that the Lich were behind Harbard when he was talking to or when he watched Hugo walk away and he said uh, I don't know what he said, but he said your majesty at the end of it and then Same turned to the to Lich. Like he was talking to Leviathan, or <laughs> Leviathan, Ultima. Uh, and if he's aware of it, and Barnabas is also on this whole mythos thing, he, he understands that Clive's mythos, that's for sure, then uh, it's it's got to be. It's got to be the case to me. I just spent a long time walking here. Ultima said he wanted to sever a conscience. Consciousness, I don't know what he meant by that, but it said something about not wanting to... Not... I wouldn't... A new world isn't ready to be created yet. We have time to contemplate before our new world or something. So, those are thoughts that I wanted to keep in my head, but they, they weren't really that important. So I just spent all this time walking <laughs> all the way across the hideaway while that was up, not thinking like, oh, they can't see it. Sorry about that. <clears throat> but, yeah, I... Those are my current theories and questions that I have. All right. Hi, Mid. Sorry to keep you waiting, Mid. But you'll be pleased to know that work on the shielding is underway. You found something for it. In a manner of speaking, Hippocrates knew of a substance that's highly resistant to heat, a coating that should provide the protection you need. He's supervising the construction and testing of the shielding as we speak. Brilliant. I knew you wouldn't let me down. The Mark Seuss is... I'm just the errand boy. Right then, better start working out how to bolt all these bits together. To the Black Hammer! I do feel like she's just trying to put off saying hi to her dad's grave. You know, when I go into the smithing game, I thought I'd be making swords and shields, not thermal bleeding didgeridoo -dars. Displacement stacks. Same difference. Whatever you call it, I ain't putting it together in here. It's cramped enough as it is. <laughs> Let's take this outside. Yeah, how big is this thing? Get lined up on the deck. I'll take care of the rest. On my way. Oh, and bring me the biggest salmon you can find. This is going to require some precision wallabing. <laughs> I could use Titan magic. That would be a walloping. I swear to God, if this thing's like three stories tall. <laughs> oh, it's not that big. I was gonna say it looks kind of ancient, but then again, you can't fix up the fallen runes. 
is finished. You can't do anything to him. It's finally finished. Thank fuck for that. I'll be feeling my hammer arm for weeks. Thank you, Clive, Blackthorn, everyone. That's one down and just three more to go. What? I'm sorry. Oh, didn't I tell you? The Enterprise has four mithril engines and we'll be needing a displacement stack for each. That you don't mean. <laughs> don't worry. Now they've got a finished one to work off, my gang in Canva can build the rest. Oh. Good luck to them, I say. Right, I'm off to get a sling for this elbow. Any other work comes in, keep it to yourselves, eh? Fair. All right. Can we convince you now? Good, no one's updated. What's the matter? Nothing. Just daydreaming. Thinking about the Enterprise sailing off over the horizon to shores unknown. Searching for a land untouched by the blight. Just like me and my dad planned. So if the worst came to the worst and every scrap of soil in the twins turned black, we might still have a chance. That's what she was meant to be. You see, one last chance just in case we needed it. But now she's so close to being finished, I've realized I don't want her to be that. I don't want her to be just a lifeboat for us to cling to if things get desperate. I want... I want people to sail a border by choice, not from the lack of it. In a world where we're not just trying to survive, but where we can actually live. I'm working on that. And I'll do everything I can to get you what you want. <laughs> Don't you always? Most right. of the time. My mind's made up. As soon as the Enterprise is fit to sail, I'm putting her under your command. Sod our yeah. plans, I'm trusting in yours. Are you sure about this? Something tells me it's what my dad would have wanted. He'd be proud of you. You, um... You were gonna visit his grave, weren't you? I was. And you can come too, now that your little project is finished. Mm. Right. There's just one thing I need to finish up first. Won't be a mo. All right. I'll let Otto know you're coming. Meet us in the mess when you're ready. Aye, aye, Captain. I knew there'd be one more thing. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, she's very much more receptive than I thought to it, though. Oh, hey. The Enterprise will have four Mithril engines, each needing its own displacement stack. So just three more like this, and we'll be finished. <laughs> it's going to be a great boat. You told me she was building a Uh-oh. What the... Where, where did these come from? Please, please. Okay, it's only these. Uh, one of them's a plus. We're absolutely going to unlock something by doing this. Uh, let's check the missile first, and then that. All right. Three of them? About Blackthorn. Cheers for your help dragging Blackthorn out of the dumps the other day. The thing is, I reckon he's gone and thrown himself back in, judging by the drool droop of his jowls lately. So I'm thinking maybe it weren't just the leather what was on his mind. Maybe there are other demons jabbing their pitchforks into his privates. I know you're a busy bloke, but next time you find yourself free, maybe we could go and ask the old bastard what's got him so hot and bothered, assuming it ain't just the fort. Yeah? Hopefully it's nothing. But I should speak to Blackthorn just in case. I guess we're continuing that quest. Well, I thought it would be main story right away, but doesn't doesn't look like it. Looks like there's two more quests here. Oh, Karen quest. Clive, something ain't right with that hound of yours. When it pleases your lordship, come and pay me a visit at the toll. What could be wrong with Torgor? You seen well enough when I last saw him. Well, we have to do that. Well, we're doing everything. What am I saying? But whatever's wrong with Torgal, we fix it. The pen is mightier. 
I was thumbing through the hideaway ledgers at Otto's behest and might have come across something that might need your attention. Maybe. And by that, I mean immediately. You know where I'll be. Trouble with the ledgers? Shouldn't he be asking Otto for help? So weird the music cuts out for that. Well, we're gonna we're gonna do black blackthorns thingy first. Oh my god! And that that wasn't even part of it. There's actually four side quests. Whew. All right, let's get moving. I'll try to cut as much as I can uh, to see if we can get these done quickly. But you first, Blackthorn. Do you have a moment? Not really, no. This won't take long. I just wanted to ask how you're getting on. August was worried about you, and you might still be doubting your craft, even after learning the trick of that cuirass. Is there something else weighing on your mind? Perhaps sharing your thoughts might help. That bastard's like a dog with a bone. Still, you've got a keen eye, I'll give him that. He's just, well, Karen showed me something. Something I've never seen before. Oh? And that was? A sword. An odd-looking thing with a single-edged blade. The metal itself wasn't anything to write home about, but fuck me. The edge on it. You could slice a man clean in two with a weapon like that, and he'd be halfway home before he even realized he'd been cut. So that's what's troubling you? Nah. No, no, no. They're not troubling me exactly. More distracting. Can't stop thinking. How do you get an edge of that sharp? It's driving me mad. And if you knew how to do it, we could arm the curse breakers with even better blades. That's about the size of it, yeah. I'll see what I can find out. Sharper swords are always welcome. And we can't have our master blacksmith being distracted. True. Sure as soft touch, you know that. But I can't say I'm not grateful for it. Good luck, eh? Thank you. Probably ask Karen Let's about see what it. Karen knows about this sword. Yeah. What am I talking about? That's like the only option. I got your note. You think something's wrong with Torgal? So you can read. Congratulations. <laughs> but I didn't say I were wrong with him. I said some weren't right. He's not been eating me treats. Oh. He used to love cracking the bones from Molly's boiled brown, but now he won't so much as look at him. Didn't like him. Which is why I'm of a mind that his mind's on somewhere else. You've not been working him too hard, have you? No harder than usual. Is that it, boy? Do you need a rest? That was a nod. What was it you said he was? A frost wolf? That's what the lawsman seems to think. Then maybe this all has something to do with whatever it is that's woken inside him. I suppose things have been different since Rosaleth. Perhaps Hippocrates knows something. Instead of everything, you mean? Perhaps. Two, two different people are distracted. Tor Torgal and the blacksmith are distracted. You're looking well, Karen. What you want? How were they? I want to know about the sword you showed Blackthorn. Single-edged and extremely sharp. Running around after him again, are you? I suppose I am, yes. But I need to help him find out how to work an edge like that. It's driving him to distraction. Little wonder, I suppose. There's not many like that make it as far as the twins, and those that do go straight into private collections. Which made it nice and easy finding a buyer. Can you tell me who bought it? Where is it now? You think I tell people who my clients are? Suppose uh. you're not likely to go nicking him off me, are you now? Fine. If you stop mooning at me like that. Lord Ignac's the man you want. Delmechian bloke. Collects weapons and the like. And he's got more money than sense, which is why he's one of my favorite clients. Oh, so we gotta be nice. still be at the inn in Dallamil, where I left him. Thank you, Karen. Oh, and he's a touch eccentric, if you take my meaning. I appreciate the warning. 
uh, eccentric. Well, don't just stand there gawping. What? I don't claim to know much about frost wolves, but I expect Tones does. Claim to, that is. I guess that dialogue is just there if you if you're wanted to remember. Some, be quick about it. Um, have I restocked my my potions? Yeah. You're finished, are you? I feel like I haven't gone outside and fought in a long time. So, <laughs> all right. So one of us, uh, one of them's got to take us to Dollar Mill. Still have to speak to Goat. Lawsman. I need to ask you about Torgor. Something's not right with him. He isn't ill, is he? I don't think so. But according to Lady Karen, he seems to have lost his appetite. Which is certainly a new development. She says he's hardly been touching his bones of late, and she believes it may have something to do with what happened at Rosalith Castle. Hmm. I rather think she might be right, though not about his appetite. Oh. All canids are instinctively inclined to crack open bones for the rich marrow that resides within. And I see no reason why a frost wolf should be any different. Accordingly, I suspect it is not a lack of appetite that afflicts Torgal, but a surfeit of it. If we assume that his newfound magics require additional nourishment to sustain, it may well be that the bones Lady Karen is accustomed to providing are no longer sufficient. Oh, Frost yeah. wolves, after all, habitually prey upon far larger animals, whose bones may yield altogether different nutrients. As to where one might find a suitable substitute, some antelopes that graze the meadows of eastern Rosaria have been known to grow to a size more than double that of their lesser cousins. I don't recall ever seeing any that large. And little wonder. The oldest and largest such creatures rarely leave the safety of the highlands for fear of predators. The last elder antelope sighting I recall hearing about took place near Cressida, and that was long before the village was abandoned. Even so, it seems like a good place to start. All right, good we're going time. hunting. That's fine with me. All right, next to Goat. Did I talk to Gav? He's sitting down over there. Clive, did you get my letter? Why are you whispering? That's why I'm here. Shh. Otto won't be listening. Uh -oh. Is this better? <laughs> A little. Listen. I have some bad news. It turns out the hideaway may be slightly behind in its payment to certain lenders. And it may be my fault. But I swear to the goddess, I thought I had the numbers square. Sadly, that square turned out to be more of a circle. Zero, you might say. How? I can straighten it out, I swear, but it's going to take some time, and I'm going to need help keeping it from Otto. Be late for that, I'd say. There you are. What a surprise. So let me get this straight. You forget to pay our lenders what they're due, and instead of coming straight to me, you get Clive to come to you. And I hope he'll dig you out of the hole you've dug for yourself. Clive, the man in charge of the place you've been cheerfully trying to bankrupt. And you thought this was a cunning plan. Why? Well, who needs paying? Oh, just Martha. And the dame. Uh-oh. And, well, Lady Karen. <laughs> Uh-oh, oh, indeed. 500 talents. We owe three of our most trusted friends five million gil. Each? Five million each. They lent us the bulk of the money we used to rebuild the hideaway, you see. And, well, I, I must have made some sort of oversight. <sighs> Those ledgers were my responsibility. And it was my decision to entrust them to you. This is my fault. Do we have that much to hand? I can always ask my uncle. No, we don't. And no, you won't. 
We've lightened Lord Rosfield's purse enough. After the King's ransom we had off him, he deserves better than to see our begging bowl. Besides, we'll need to learn to stand on our own if we're going to make this work. But All right. how? But that doesn't mean you have to shoulder the burden yourself. Is there anything I can do to help? There might be. How'd you fancy taking these to Martha and the Dame? Rocks. Rocks, he says. Worth a thousand talents apiece, these are. What? A little something Sid and I set aside for when times got lean. And I reckon 15 million in overdue debt probably qualifies. I just hope our associates' eyes are a bit more discerning than yours. I'm sure they will be. Hmm. Should be me making the rounds, really. But you know how it is with this place. Orders to bark, asses to wipe and all that. I know. Which is why I don't mind going in your place. Go. Do you know why I only gave Master Clive here two star rubies? Oh, Because he's... you'd rather Lady Karen killed me. Because I'd rather Lady Karen killed you. Yes. Well, I suppose this is goodbye then. God's been Don't worry. Sir. I'm sure Karen will understand. Really? Do you think so? No. I don't. <laughs> Poor guy, he's done for. Clive. Too sorry to, to drag you it. into this, Master Clive. It's, it's just I couldn't think who else to ask, and you're always so willing to help everyone. Yeah. That's what they call Clive. Yes, man. Quick look. Always something in there. It's it's my fault, really. Honestly. All right, we have to pick up the quest over here. Whatever that is. I thought it was going to be in the school upstairs, but no, it's That's it, then. down here. Oh, bugger. Oh, Wayne? It's a here. etherology? Sid, reckon you might be just the man to help me out of a bit of bother. If you've a mind to. Let's hear it. Well, it's about this alembic the chief's got me making. Lovely bit of kit it is. Bung in a solution you want split in, and it will separate it out, just like that. Uh -huh. Problem is, it won't always get rid of all the impurities. And with some of the stuff we need it for, that ain't good enough. Which is why I've been looking for something to filter the liquid we'll be cooking off. And that's where I was hoping you could help me out. I have no idea what you're asking, but sure. I imagine Ty could get some use out of this Alembic too. Distilling medicines and the like. Oh. All right. <laughs> Why not? Proper job! So what exactly do you need for this filter? Nothing but bomb ash will do, says the chief. Gave me a sample she'd obtained from the university stores. Couldn't believe my eyes. You pour the blackest blight water through it, and it comes out clear as a mountain stream. Wow. So, I did a bit of reading about where I might be able to get older some. And do you know what I found out? It's only the blimmin' bones of a bomb king. They leave them behind when they die, see? I take it that's where I come in. <laughs> if you wouldn't mind. I, I, I saw a billet on the hunt board for one just the other day. Okay. Would have gone myself, but, well, fighting dirty great balls of flame isn't exactly my forte. You, on the other hand... Thrive right. in it. I'll see what I can do. Thank you kindly. And, and a good hunting, eh? Awesome. Uh, I guess I'll prioritize it. We have four side quests to do, and one of them is a hunt. Man. Okay. If only I knew sooner that this was going to be side quest. Just because I've been so excited to go with Mid to the old hideaway, and we're just... Couldn't these have come after? <laughs> Something big's probably going to happen there, at, based on like how much they're opening up right here. You want to hunt for a bomb king, Koopo? If so, I have a billet that might interest you. 
Okay. Rank B. A curse breaker aiming for the Imperial Chase took a wrong turn into a nearby wood, within which she discovered the ruins of a fallen airship. Uh, in Imperial... Nearby wood? And within them, a beast akin to a great ball of fire that chased her screaming from the grove. The soldier later identified the creature in the Almanac of Echoes. But was firm in her insistence that the bomb she saw was near ten times the size of the one depicted therein. Okay, the croc in Sandbrek. Where is... Okay, that's for the dame. The croc. Maybe it's uh, smaller? That's Baywatch. Um, I said, yeah, this is the Imperial Chase right here. Ah, I haven't, wait, no, this is the river, isn't it? No, th this is the river. This actually might be it then. Oh my God, we still haven't even been here? That's so weird. All right, uh, we'll talk to the dame and then we'll go do that hunt, because why not? Fine little beyond Northridge though. When the throne moved south, most of any sense followed. This guy just said that we can walk freely. Has this place changed? Like, legit? Did you... Here, the gates to heaven hall. I want to, to heaven hall? Interesting. The time was there were great coin sacks swinging from every belt in town. Not anymore. Since the capital moved, they're all shriveled to the size of peas. I kind of want to find that little girl that we uh, made cry. See if she like learned her lesson over the past five years. My lady, I come bearing gifts. Gifts? Whatever is the occasion. A star ruby, one of three brilliant gemstones acquired by and set aside by Sid for a rainy day. Otto now deems that that day to have arrived and wishes to use the rubies to pay off three outstanding debts to all three of them. Oh my. Clive, you really have outdone yourself. I know, right? Otto asked me to give it to you. To settle the hideaway's debt with the veil. And to compensate you for the time it took us to do so. Oh, you disappoint me, Clive. I thought you might finally be warming to me. Tell Otto he can keep his baubles. I tried to tell him as much the first time around. Oh? The man owes me nothing, nor does the hideaway. My contribution to the restoration effort was made freely and willingly. It was the least I could do. You once told me Sid did you a kindness. I'd like to do the same. Please, accept it. For my sake. And for Otto's. For all of us. For all you've done. <sighs> it is rather fetching, isn't it? I wouldn't know. Very well. <laughs> we, we can't actually see it. Otto is lucky to have you, Clive. I doubt anything could ever replace his son. But oh. you and the others at the hideaway are the closest thing he has to family. Otto had a son. This is new. Long ago. Yes. Sid told me Otto lost him when he was just a boy and blamed himself for not being able to stop it. I don't know how it happened. Whether there was anything he could have done. But it was clear that it weighed heavily on him. I didn't know. How could you have? I doubt anyone did. Besides Sid, I've never met a man more keen to bear his sorrows in stoic silence. An ill habit, given that both have always been surrounded by friends desperate to help them. <laughs> I'm beginning to see that. Wow. 
Uh, I don't know why I'd, I never would have thought that Otto had a kid. Give my regards to Otto and tell him I do so miss his visits. His visits? What kind of visits? All right, let's, uh, somewhere around there. That's where we're headed. Uh, we've been around here. I didn't see any path. It's kind of weird. You have to, like, jump up here? Uh, excuse me. Stupid raptors. I'm just gonna... Where are you? Oh, I don't have wind-up ready. Alright, they're gone. Oh. How have we not spotted this? I... What? I guess maybe the gate was up before? Yeah, the Bomb King probably took it down, honestly. Alright, well, we just passed that. What the hell? There's a whole, like, town over here. Or house. Huh. Hello, Mr. Bomb? It's, it's gotta be here. There's another section, I see. Huh. Uh. Oh, it's before you get in here. Probably should have taken Ambrosia, honestly, but. Kind of like walking everywhere. Uh, wh when he can sprint. When he can't sprint, I don't like that. It's so slow. There it is. <sighs> Bomb King. Are you actually bigger? A little bit. Here. Your Majesty. Oh, okay, that's coronation. I almost forgot which I had skills on. Oh, no. I did that wrong. Woo! Alright. Oh, uh. Damn it. As you can tell, it's been a bit since I played. What the hell is that? Oh, it's split. Those things probably self-destruct pre pretty fast. Oh my god, I'm standing at everything. Go. Oh wait, you don't even have a stagger bar. I didn't even realize that. Oh, that sucks. Titan. Yeah, if it doesn't have a stagger bar, I'm just gonna use everything. Oh, that's bad. No, go for those. Oh god, that's bad. <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm just gonna stand here. Alright, we're good. What? Nice try. Hit me! Now you're doing like multi shots? Okay. I'm not proud of this fight. Holy shit. 
I am not proud of that one at all. Uh, I don't know how bombs attack. It seems like they have like a weird... I don't know. I need to see more. Bomb Ember. Figuratively, the smoldering soul of a bomb given life by unknown magics. Literally, a very hot rock. Fortunately, there are myriad uses for such a thing. Hmm. That was brutal. Over. Right? No, oh. This looks like the stuff. Let's see if there's any more. I'm sorry. I cut you off, Clyde. Uh, I've also I been like. If a wine needs more than this, he can fetch it himself. Yeah. I will. Uh, actually, we'll, we'll head over to another quest to, to continue before we turn him in. There's just too many quests for me not to. I've also been uh, talking with a friend about his, his build in this game versus my build and uh, trying to figure out like what I could do differently and it's 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 so hard like everyone has a completely different play style and it turns out lightning rod is amazing from what I've heard like you could gouge on a lightning rod and it'll just keep expanding the whole time and you can use will of the wikes to like rock it over and over so uh, I'm considering trying that stuff at some point to see what it's like Clive we weren't expecting you. I wasn't expecting to be here. But it seems we still owe you a considerable amount of coin for your help with our rebuilding efforts. And though I doubt it's what you were expecting, we were hoping you'd take this as payment. Sorry, Ruby. A star, Ruby? I can't accept this. It's worth at least twice what you owe me. More if you can find yourself the right buyer. More? Think of the difference is interest. Interest? If word got out I charged that much, no one would ever borrow from me again. Anyway, why are you the one here asking me about this? I'd have expected Otto. Bit much sending the Lord Marquis out to sell your debts, isn't it? The old goat working himself to death again. Something like that. Most days I think he's the only reason the hideaway's still standing. Same as always, eh? Back when the place was nothing but a twinkle in the eye of a recently retired Lord Commander, word is he was the first one Sid reached out to. Probably knew that without his strong arm and level head, the idea would never get off the ground. Sid may have been the face of the hideaway, but Otto's always been the backbone. And when Sid passed away, we were all worried that would be the end of it. The Otto would just give up. His death mm. was hard on everyone. But it must have hit Otto hardest of all. But he didn't give up, did he? Quite the opposite, in fact. If I recall, he was the one who nominated you as Sid's replacement. And rallied the rest around you. I reckon what he saw in Sid, he saw in you too. And don't we all? Doesn't hurt that you're half as stubborn and twice as handsome, neither. <laughs> that, and you keep good company. <laughs> I suppose I do. Wow, I never even thought about, like, uh, how he... Were delivered. Is he still with us? <laughs> yeah, Karen didn't kill him yet. I uh, never thought about how uh, everyone just kind of, like, elected Clive to be Sid. I, I thought he just kind of, like, took over. I, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't even think about it. That's weird. Alright. So, a Elder Antelope should be over here. Or, at least Come on, maybe a trail of one. But if I were a giant antelope, it would seem like just the place. It was a long time ago, though. I mean, oh, I, apparently these are giant antelopes. You hungry, Toggle? <laughs> Very hungry, apparently. Oh, I let go of the button. Oh. Let's use everything. Oh. Oh. 
There better not be backup. Uh, deadly embrace. Oh, what? Okay. This should be enough to keep him <laughs> satisfied for a bit, right? It was like six of them. No. Will it be enough, I wonder? He skipped a lot of I the process in here. Question, which means we owe the lawsmen our thanks. I'm just a big puppy, quick. aren't you? A very big puppy. <laughs> you do know you can take that with you, Toggle. Lady Karen will be relieved to hear you've got your appetite back. Come on, boy. Hold on. It's not done till we pet him. <laughs> there we go. All right, but we actually have to go to Dolomil before that. Oh, he's like right near. Notice of wealthy men. Shouldn't be too hard to track down Karen's collector. Back again, are you? Uh, I've talked to you. Trouble and you'll be yeah. I've talked to you too. Yeah. Welcome. If you're hoping for a bed, I'm afraid you'll have to look elsewhere. It is within this area. It might be one of his rooms. Really? Oh, he took My Joshua's room. Will be ruined. Ruined. Calm yourself, Lord Ignac. I beg of you, before you do yourself a mischief. Pardon the intrusion, but out! Get out! Oh. I paid for these rooms so I wouldn't be disturbed. Leave me be! Please, allow me to apologize. His lordship is going through a difficult time, and he's never been fond of guests arriving unannounced. Radim! Get rid of the filthy oaf this instant! Very good, Lord Ignac. Would you mind stepping outside for a moment? Manservant. His sword was stolen. I'm sorry if I've caused you any trouble. That? No, no, no. That's just how his lordship is. Though the morning's events have left him somewhat fractious. He has been dispossessed of his luggage, you see. The thieves also made away with a considerable amount of coin. Coin the innkeeper will soon be keen to collect. Oh. I don't suppose a certain blade was among the stolen items. A single-edged sword. It was purchased from a merchant friend of mine. Ah, you know Lady Karen. Yes, I'm afraid it was. Then I'll retrieve Lord Ignac's luggage. But I have one condition. You are but to state it. You are welcome to anything that is within my power to grant. I want an audience with Lord Ignac. A few minutes should be enough. Then I'll be on my way. A condition I would be a fool to refuse. Of course, you shall have your audience. I don't suppose you saw where the thieves went? I did not, no. Though some discreet inquiries made on his lordship's behalf mean that I know where you might find them. Oh. The bandit's bed. Every ill-gotten coin in Dalamal is said to pass through that disreputable corner of the Valcroy. And that's where I'm heading. I shall speak to Lord Ignac in your absence, and arrange for an audience upon your triumphant return. That will be very kind of you. Farewell, and best of luck. Thank you, sir. Uh, I remember going there and being like, nope, there's nothing, there's nothing here. Yeah, right there. Okay, that's a long walk, or ride. This is so much more open than it feels like it's been a while since I've like looked back at the desert, but like very much open. Yeah, it's kind of barren. 
like a desert would be. But, like, I don't know. Ooh, scorpions. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm busy. I just remember recently seeing arguments from people, like, giving this game, like, a zero, basically, saying, yeah, it's just a hallway. Uh... I, I have things Come to show on, them. The oh, you blocked everything? The innkeeper. I didn't realize he had a stagger bar. Damn it, I should have saved my stuff. You're actually going to be... A little tough? Oh, let's see if I can get it. I don't know. One more. One more. I need you there. Staggered? Yeah. He is so done. <laughs> Those were some sounds. Okay. That's the perfect stagger, the one I want every time, is Raging Fist be starts this with must it. Be Ignac's luggage. Pauses time and then does like 1.3. Right. Let's get it back to Delamel. Oh good. You're gonna fast forward. Nice. I hear I have you to thank for the return of my effects. What shall I call you, my good man? Filthy Elf is fine. Glad to make your acquaintance. A formidable name indeed. Well, Wyvern, I appear to be in your debt. Redeem here tells me you wished for an audience. Is that all? A few moments of your time should suffice, yes. You're a peculiar fellow, Wyvern. All right. Speak. A master wyvern was wondering if you could tell him about a certain single-edged sword you recently acquired. Oh, a true work of art, that one. Karen drove me hard on the price, but I would have sold her Radim here to get my hands on that sword. <laughs> it was what? made in the Outer Isles, far beyond the Twins, and is used exclusively by the practitioners of a unique school of swordsmanship. They believe no combat should ever exceed a single strike and hone their blades to such perfection that none ever does. Each sword is That's made awesome. for that one perfect stroke and for that stroke only. They crack upon a second blow. Oh. There's a brutal sort of beauty to it, really. But how do they hone such an edge? Ha <laughs> fine question. Why, they use a whetstone, of course. <laughs> Whetstones, rather. A whole array of them, ranging from the coarse to the fine. 10,000 licks with the sharpening stone, then 10,000 more. For one hit. It's the final stone which lends the blade its legendary sharpness. A mineral quite foreign to this great realm of ours. And that is the key. The secret ingredient. Wyvern, it occurs to me that my little lecture is hardly equal to services rendered. Take this, together with my regards. The very stone of which I spoke. Far rarer among collectors than even the blade itself. What? And a far more fitting payment. Uh... Thank you. Pardon the intrusion, my lordship. However, it is long past time we prepared ourselves to depart. So it is. I am locked in bitter competition with a rival collector of curiosities. I am one step ahead of the unscrupulous scoundrel, but he is hard at my heels. And there are many other collectors out there. Too many to count, but only one do I consider my nemesis. 
Lord Byron Rosfield. And is a perennial thorn in my side. <laughs> I can imagine. Farewell, Wyvern. May our paths cross again. Radim, we mustn't dawdle. Of course it would be Byron. I think his lordship is rather taken with you, Master Wyvern. Thank you again for your assistance. Coming, my lordship. I'll be right there. That is a lot of work for one strike, and I don't think Blackthorn's gonna Trust want it. Uncle Byron to find such an interesting rival. Now, let's see what Blackthorn makes of this whetstone, shall we? Honestly, if we tell him what we did, or what, what uh, the the story about it, he's probably gonna be like, "That's not, it's not worth it." He'll be satisfied because he'll be like, "Yeah, oh, uh, nope." Just wanted to zoom the map out. Okay, uh, back to the hideout then. All right, talk to Karen about Torgal, blacksmith, Blackthorn about blacksmith stuff. I noticed you and Torgal had gone off somewhere. Took him for a walk, did you? Hmm. <laughs> you could say that. So, Molly's leftovers weren't good enough, eh? That'll teach me for treating you like you're still a pup. <laughs> all right, all right, no need to shout. Now we know what you're after, I can see about getting some in. Speaking right. of which, I brought one for later. Can I leave it with you? Elder Antelope Femur. Short of slaying a behemoth, or a coral, or a bison, a minotaur, or an adamantoids, one would be hard-pressed to find a larger leg bone. If this does not satisfy Tortugal's ancestral hunger, chances are nothing will. You can, eh? Hey. I'm nice like that. In return, you can thank Tomes for me. The bloody know-it-all. I was just on my way to see him. Alright, I guess we gotta do that to finish the quest. Uh... I can't believe this... I was so certain we'd be going right to mid. <laughs> and just... Ah, so Clive. weird. Were you able to locate your quarry? We were indeed, Lawsman. You pointed us in exactly the right direction. And Torgal's been a very happy hound ever since. Very good, very good. Lady Karen sends her thanks, by the way, for your part in solving the mystery. Ah, but that reminds me. After your last visit, I found myself pondering Torgal's talents. Yeah. Do you recall our conversation concerning Lady Jill's role in Torgal's transformation? About how she somehow woke the power within him? Precisely that. A reasonable conclusion, I thought. But one which raised certain questions in my mind. You see, the Fenrir of legend served Shiva and Shiva alone. And while the powers attributed to him are certainly impressive, the records imply they are somewhat different in nature to those you describe Torgal as having used. Oh? What are you suggesting? To mix? That Torgal may be the beneficiary of more than one icon's power. Consider that in addition to Lady Jill, he has served as a loyal companion to you, your brother, and even the late Sid. In short, the icons hitherto near at hand, or should I say at poor, have been diverse and plenty, and that number has only grown as the realm's dominance have fallen to your sword. One can but speculate as to how all of this has affected Torgal. He has seemed more fierce of late. And if I'm not mistaken, he will grow fiercer still. We are fortunate indeed to be able to count him amongst our allies and not our adversaries. I would never. <laughs> oh, he's more than an ally. He's a friend. Torgo could turn on me and I would just be like, all right, take me. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't hurt him. Caval's Fang. 
Ooh, even a legendary king, surrounded by the realm's greatest knights and blessed by the very heavens, would have found himself hard-pressed to unite the warring tribes of ancient Valisthea. Fortunately, he had help of it, the help of his fine and trusty hound, Caval. Slightly increases his attack. But I have to wear that to increase his attack? I mean, I use him a lot. Maybe not all the time, but I, I do use him. Like, like attack plus 12. I think I use Torgal more than I use my own combo. But this is only slightly increases. I, I don't know. Because, like, 4 attack is... Or, 12 attack is, like, 4 levels. Potentially 6 levels. It's, uh, well, at least we have it. I can, t I can test these things later. Uh, well, <laughs> I, I really haven't spent time, like, trying to figure out the ideal build because we're not near the end of the game yet. I hope. Please don't tell me we're near it. I mean, what, what, what do you do about, oops. What do you do about this? Look at all this room. One... Two, three. It looks like you can fit at least three more icon in here. Oh my god, I have so many points. No, don't think about it. Literally, unless I'm using an ability, there's no point in leveling it. <laughs> Sorry for the wait. But hopefully you'll agree it was worth it. You learned something about that sort then. I did better than that. I brought the sundered whetstone from the southern on the southern quarried on the southern continent. Its unparalleled hardness makes it perfect for sharpening blades forged from all manner of me metals, from bronze to adamantite. I, a whetstone, yes, but not one you'll find anywhere in Valestia. No wonder I couldn't get the same finish on the grinding wheel. <laughs> One hit and all done, eh? Might not be so bad if all you ever fought were duels. Yeah, yeah. And good luck on the battlefield. Your second opponent would be your last, no matter how good you were. Even so, is there some way it could be used to give the curse breakers an edge? I think so, yeah. With this whetstone and the right kind of steel, I could probably even make a twin of the blade that rattled me. But there'd be no replacing this little rock once I worn it down to a sliver. I reckon we get a dozen swords from it, if that. Swords that the curse breakers wouldn't know how to wield, probably, and that would see them through a single fire piece. Nah, no point trying to copy that thing. Be about as much use as a wax anvil. But finishing our blades with a whetstone is fine. Now that's something to consider. Okay, and yeah. finer than fallen masonry, eh? Or more hard wearing, for that matter. Just imagine it. Good Valisthean steel with an edge as sharp as any found in the Outer Isles. I won't make a copy, nah. I'll make something much better. I'm sure the Curse Breakers will be delighted. Just... don't push yourself too hard. <laughs> don't you worry about me, Sunshine. I'll be working day and night since I was half your age. And I'll still be here when you're long gone. Hey. Thanks, Clive. I mean it. I owe you one. August 2. I mean, it's good to know someone's looking out for me. You'll be happy to hear you said that. And I'll see that my debt to you's paid. First new blade I make's got your name on it. You come and find me when you've got the materials. All right. I will. This, this is probably unlocking another recipe right now. It was a plus quest. Oh, I leveled up. Hey. 37. Um, Excalibur design draft? Really? It is a diagram detailing the steps to forge a sword to rival that of a legendary king. I don't think that's going to be our ultimate weapon, but that's quite the step up. Just in name. The fact that, you know. Excalibur hasn't been in every Final Fantasy, but it's, it's been in quite a few. 
And in some of them, it was the ultimate weapon. So, would it be? I think it was in four, right? In this case, it's barely stronger than this. Ooh, but way more stun. Though modern day plays such as the Adventures of Sir Crandall have taken the to embellishing the tale considerably, historians do agree that long ago the nations of Valisthea were, for a short time, united under a single king and his band of loyal knights. Whether or not he was indeed crowned upon drawing a sword from the stone is a matter still up for debate. Oh, so Sir Crandall was this world's... Oh my god. Arthur. Not bad, if I do say so myself. Alright, well that's going to be very helpful. Still haven't found anything good here. Yeah. Silken Sash, interesting. We have two more quests to turn in, and I guess I guess we're gonna have to wait to do mids. I only had time for one episode. I think that's why I'm like a little anxious because I was like, maybe I could fit mid in here. Nope, nope. But that's okay. It's certainly. She was building a ship. Really? That's a ship. That's not a ship. Oh, yeah, I didn't Is talk to you. you done then? It's not roped you into building the rest of the board, has she? Not yet. Goat. Still alive, I see. So Lady Karen accepted the ruby. Ah, oh, about that. Uh, I tried my best. But she was just too stubborn to take it. She threw it right back in my face, in fact, and told me <laughs> I could stick my stupid stone where the sun don't shine. Well. Karen refused payment. I hope it wasn't something I said. I'm sure you were as tactful as ever. Let me see what I can do. Oh, wonderful. I hope you have better luck than I did. Uh, I don't think it's gonna change. She, she doesn't... I don't know. Alright. I feel like she kinda sees us as family, and... I don't know. She wouldn't want to... Lady Karen, Go tells me you weren't happy with our offer. But you prefer the debt was repaid in coin. What debt? I don't recall lending any of you lot me hard earned gill. I may have tossed a talent or two in the Hardaway's coffers, but those were donations. And you can hardly call it charity if you go asking for it back. Of course oh. not. But one good turn deserves another. And our circumstances have changed. Surely you wouldn't shun the gratitude of a pauper who happened to have become a prince. Oh, so you're a prince now, are you? Fine. But I'm selling it and taking what I'm owed, then you're getting the rest whether you like it or not. <laughs> Wait. We're getting five million? I'll take it. Where'd you buy a song? Get this? A decent trader might nab a thousand talents for a star ruby. A canny one, meanwhile, might claim it were nicked from the belt of Sid the Outlaw himself and ask twice as much. <laughs> might be I already have a buyer in mind. Might be you even know her. The fine continental maid whose beauty is only eclipsed by a guile in commerce. You won't mind, would you? Not at all. Just be sure to tell her that it's always a pleasure doing business. Who? You can't be talking about. You can't be talking about the dame. Delivering all three stones. Thanks to this lump, I sometimes wonder what I pay you for. Speaking of which, I, uh, I, uh, I still haven't been paid last month's time. wages. Stop it. Oh, so you remember what's owed to you then? Get your ass beyond that disc of yours and don't get up before those ledges are square. Right away. I've seen that before. You yeah, have, yeah. Plenty of times. It was the only goblet Sid ever used. Either out of habit 
All because the filthy sod couldn't be bothered to find a clean one. I knew so little about him. Like most people. Martha and the Dame both seem to have fond memories of him. Huh. I bet they do. How long did you know Sid before he... Before he died. Twenty summers, give or take. Back in the day, I was a purser on a trade ship. Which is where I met him. He bought passage to... I oh, forget where. But having nothing better to do on the long nights, we set up drinking island rum till the morning bell dragged me back to my duties. Quit my mm. post not long after that. On account of making a fine maiden's belly fat. But me and Sid stayed close. Promising we'd one day sail the seas again. That was... before fate stepped in. And said she was having none of it. The magic woke inside my son soon after his first name day. And there was no hiding his neck. Couldn't you and your family have? My family were the ones who summoned the constable. Wanted the monster taken away. I couldn't turn my back on him. Forget what I felt. And I couldn't for the life of me understand how they could. Luckily, Sid was of the same mind as me. And it was him who stood beside me when... All I wanted was to tear the whole world down. Him who cried for me when I had no tears left of my own. Him who swore he'd do everything he could to stop it from happening again. And he was true to his word, too. Left the Royal Army once and for all. His ranks, his ribbons, gone. Just like that. Threw away everything he had, all to right a wrong that no one else had the courage to face. I knew then I'd follow that man to the ends of the earth. Wow. That was that was that was some good story there. Oh my god, we're actually getting a flashback? Was always too clever for his own good, was Sid. Saw the world for what it really was, while the rest of us were content to go along with the lie we were shown. And it can't have been easy bearing that burden alone. But he didn't let it stop him. He never lost faith in what he believed was right. And that gave us faith in him. Faith he'd steer us true. So I swore to myself that I'd always be right behind him. Ready to catch the stubborn sod. If ever he should fall. No. Oh. But I couldn't even do that. Ignore me. Just the ramblings of a tired old man. Leave that lot. I'll tidy it up in a bit. This. This is Sid's handwriting. Dear Otto, I may oh. be drunk, but I wanted you to know this place would be fucked without you. Love you, you old grumpy old sod. Oh. This note. Hmm? What about it? Sid was right. Without you, we all be lost. You should have bloody well said so then. 
just once before he went. But then why would he, him or anyone? I'd only have told him to piss off. You're wrong, though. Both of you. It was never just me keeping the hideaway afloat. It was all of us. I just shoved people in the right direction. I barely seem to be able to do that anymore. Teacher? Would you rather go with the helm? <laughs> well, maybe I've got a few more years left in me. <laughs> I'm going to hold you to that, Otto. Before you go, Sid would have wanted you to have this. Wall of memories. But that's... This will do me just fine. Thanks for the ray of sunshine. I'll see if I can't pay you back. Already have. <laughs> Quest complete? Yeah. My god. That that makes up for a lot of the side quests. I need to, to just getting some like closure to like them. Finally talking about Sid and, you know, I, I, I still miss him. I mean, if he was alive the whole game, it wouldn't be the same, obviously, but like, I don't know. It's weird not having him around. Although I've probably recorded just as many episodes when he was around as when he wasn't at this point, so. <sighs> According to Otto, Sid never once washed his goblet, despite using it every day for both wine and small beer. I won't have it said that I'm a poor host. I remember that. Well. That was very unexpected for a side quest. That, I mean, the cutscene quality even was actual main story cutscene quality. Uh, oh my god, that's gonna put us over. I thought this... You know, I've already, I've already said it. We have one last thing, and this guy wanted bomb ash for some Alembic, so... I'm... Alembic uh, is used to make potions and distilling medicine, right? So this is probably going to be a potion upgrade. Uh, are they going to be even stronger? All right there, Sid. How's that hunt for the bomb ash going? I have it here. Bomb ash. Oh, wait, it's hypothesized that the bomb's inclination to self-destruct during violent encounters is a form of collective preservation. Akin to how a honeybee will sting a threat to the to the hive at the cost of its own life. Collective preservation. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. That's the stuff! And plenty of it, too. Enough to keep the Olympic bubbling away for a good old while. All right. You're a gent, Sid. Let nothing say otherwise. Right then. Let's get this contraption up and running. I have zero faith that this is going to be better than the auto <laughs> quest. Sometime later. There we have it. The Telemon Alembic. And oh. it works just like the chief said it would. <sighs> Very impressive. <laughs> Since the man who cut down a burning boulder. Speaking of which, I still haven't returned a the favor. There's no need. The good it will do for the hideaway is reward enough. But don't be silly. 
Potion. Why don't you let me take a look at that bag of yours? The one you keep your potions in. Reckon I could work some magic on that, huh? What? What kind of magic? Well, we happen to have isolated a substance in our test run of the Alembic that I reckon will make even the toughest lever supple as anything. Thought we might use okay. it to breathe new life into old boots and the like. Save the hideaway a few, Gil. Ah, oh, I reckon if we slap a bit on your bag, it'll loosen it up enough for you to uh. squeeze in a bottle or two more. Well, it can't hurt to try, I suppose. That's the spirit? Leave it with me. I'll only be a mo. Okay, I was kind of expecting to, like, go up 5% more for each potion, but if we can fit two more, I'll be very happy. Does that mean more elixir, too? Or just potions? Well? What do you reckon? It certainly feels more... flexible. Right? Told you. Thank you. I think. <laughs> no, no. Thank you. For supporting Mid and the rest of us in our endeavors. Without you, we'd never have been able to discover wonders like that stuff I rubbed on your bag. And I'm telling you, there's plenty more where that came from. All right. Just, just rubbing magic on our bag. I see. I have a hundred thousand. I should buy another song. Treat a potion satchel. Were the same exotic compound compound that was applied to the leather, leather of the satchel be needed into a pair of boots, they sh would surely become supple enough to accommodate a man with 20 toes. Hmm. Inventory increased. It spends we, the entire game, like 30 hours of having... Oh my god. Not elixirs, though. Oh. That's fine. You have a treated potion satchel, hereby increasing capacity. Six potions, four high potions is a big deal for me. Uh, I need to start, I'm probably going to have to start using strength tonics more often uh, during my stagger windows. That leather loosener was only the first of the discoveries the Olympic is going to help us make. Mm. Just you wait, Sid. Just you wait. Glad to be helping. All right. Well, I think that well, that's that's it for this one. I'm absolutely going to go buy more potions now. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So in the next one, I'm not even going to make any promises because I have no idea. In the next one, we're going to talk to Otto and see if that leads to main story. Yep. That's that's the very least I can guarantee you. <laughs> oh, I wasn't expecting you back so soon. Your benefactors are a generous lot. Oh, we got the High Clerics Medallion. F 8.50 to, to get more. The goddess Grieger teaches us that to walk with the wretched is an act of greater good. If we are to accept this truth, then one could not rightly call he who follows this path an outlaw. Humble servant. You earned this. This is going to make restorative magic way more effective, right? Because I think that's what the cleric thing does. Yeah, high potions by 25%? That's like an elixir. I don't necessarily think I really need it. Yeah, let's see. Cleric cleric medallion. 20. Healing potion, uh, potions by 40. So, the whole time, these, these were only affecting potions. Not even high potions. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, because... Forty-eight percent right now. So with that, no, I'm not. I'm not going to use this, obviously. But I, I'm curious. Okay. We got seventy-three. That's well, an elixir is full health. I, I, I. That basically says like I'm going to have to heal a lot in this fight. Uh. Mid told me she was building a ship. I, th I think it, I think you can get good use out of it, technically. I haven't found anything that would be difficult with that, but uh, if there's a harder difficulty once you beat the game, 
then that would be interesting. If there is, I'm definitely doing it. I probably won't be showing it, but... Karen, is it need to buy potions before I go. Pleasure? Uh... Oh my god. It'd better all be a... Uh, buy another one, why not? me blind, you know. Am I robbing you blind? You'll not find a better price than that. I'm buying an elixir. Finished, it's, it's, are you? It's just good to have one on you. Okay, so I'm going to end it here before I go on another random tangent about something or something. So in the next one, you know, we are going to do what I said. Oh, uh, yeah, wall of memory. That's going to be the goblet. I'll look at it in the next one. But So thanks for watching. Let me know if you like it, and I will see you in the next one.